His name was Mickey, but he fought like David. This was Mickey Marcus. This is how most Americans who know of Colonel David Mickey Marcus picture him. Kirk Douglas in the 1966 film cast a giant shadow. The film was a passion project for Douglas, and he recruited a star-studded cast that included John Wayne, Ewell Brenner, Frank Sinatra, and Angie Dickinson to help tell the story of the state of Israel's first general, an American who gave up his U.S. Army commission to fight for a Jewish homeland in 1948, and whose death by friendly fire in June of that year has not diminished a long legacy that is commemorated to this day. The Jewish Channel recently journeyed to one of those commemorations, a memorial service held at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, from which Marcus graduated in 1924 and where he is now buried. Among those who spoke at the service was Jewish Colonel Glenn Goldman. Mickey Marcus is, in, in my opinion, an incredible role model of what it means to be a, a soldier, a, a mensch, if you will. Uh, as his gravestone says, he was a soldier for humanity. So I uh, came to West Point as a cadet myself. Uh, and he's buried here at the West Point Cemetery. Uh, honestly, I, I'm ashamed to admit I did not know that much about him when I was a cadet. That changed when a friend gave Goldman a copy of Ted Berkman's 1962 book about Marcus, Cast a Giant Shadow, while Goldman was serving as a captain in Operation Desert Storm. He was a friend of mine at West Point, and we used to have pretty deep, deep conversations about religion, about the world, about uh, our faith, and the, uh, he cared a lot about me and sent me this book. So I read it, and uh, since then I think Mickey Marcus has been a personal role model for me. The example Marcus set with his American career before his Israeli service is also a source of inspiration for West Point Dean of the Academic Board, Brigadier General Timothy Trainer. Mickey Marcus, what's so special about him as a West Point graduate is that he was a servant of both the Army and the nation, and two nations, and two armies, when you think about it. And that's what uh, West Point graduates, they are called to serve throughout their lifetime, throughout a lifetime of service to the Army, but at some time, at some point, that service is going to end in the Army, and we ask them to continue to serve the nation. Marcus served as an assistant U.S. attorney in New York City during the 1930s, and later as commissioner of New York City's Department of Corrections. During World War II, Marcus served various posts in the Army and as part of the D-Day Invasion Force, joining paratroopers who jumped into France despite having no prior parachute training. Just another example of the daring character that prompted David Ben-Gurion to approach Marcus for a leadership role in the Israeli Army. According to American Veterans of Israel Legacy Corporation President Jeffrey Margolis, and his nom de guerre, his name in war, was Aluf Stone. Aluf means general in Hebrew, and Stone was, uh, I guess, what they felt about him, that he was made of stone, he was so strong. It's so fascinating. Not only that, he's buried here at West Point. We're going to go to the graveside. His tombstone has a dedication from the government of Israel. So this is wild. This is... This is beyond belief. That goes for Marcus's relatives as well. Great grandniece Lalit Marcus attended the West Point Memorial and talked about Mickey's status within his extended family. So when I was a kid, I felt the way about Uncle Mickey that some people feel about Elijah at Pesach. You know, he was this mythical figure in our family. We talked about him all the time. I think the part that I didn't understand is that I didn't realize other people thought he was famous. You know, I grew up in an area where there weren't other Jewish kids. There wasn't a big Jewish community. And it wasn't until I got older and I went to Israel for the first time when I was on birthright, I found out all these other people had heard of my Uncle Mickey, and he really was as famous as everybody said he was. Lalit added that a yearly service like this one helps bring the extended Marcus family closer. Thanks to their famous relative, who was buried beside his wife, Emma. We don't actually all get to see each other very often, and especially since Mickey and Emma didn't have children of their own, we're all nieces and nephews and grandnieces and grandnephews, so we're not necessarily close during the rest of the year. And this is a real treat for us, because not only do we all get to see each other and catch up, but the fact that there are people here who have served our country, who have served Israel, in some cases who have served both, it's a, it's a real treat, and I love to hear their stories. One story about Emma Marcus regards a printed piece of her husband's legacy. I'm fascinated by the way that everyone talks about the women behind the men. And I think Emma was a pretty incredible woman in her own right, in as much as she supported any man. 
Emma lived the rest of her life. She taught school. She lived in a one-bedroom apartment in Flatbush that she stayed in for the rest of her life. And she had a giant poster of Kirk Douglas in costume as her husband hanging up in her living room. And what of Marcus's legacy for the two nations he served? Trainer says his burial site holds the answer. It shows the connection, the strong bonds and connections between the United States uh, and Israel. And uh, in that West Point was part of the founding of this country and Mickey Marcus was part of the founding of the Israeli nation. And I think there's a significance in the connection between those two. Reporting from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point for the Jewish Channel, I'm Christian Needham.